which is in the name of our Lord and husband Jesus Christ. My name is Samuel 1 and this is Understanding the Times Part 12. I was sharing with you in the last broadcast about the increase in knowledge as one of the signs of the end times. The scripture says in Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. So one of the signs of the end times is knowledge shall increase. Let me repeat it again. There is no doubt about it. We are in the end times, but we are not yet in the last days. The last days is the tail end of the end times. And the scriptures use those words in a very clear time. Even though many people over the years have used them intermittently and in exchange to each other. In the course of this broadcast, I will make you to understand the difference. But hear this, that the end time will precede the last days. And the last days is the tail end of the end times. Now, one of the things that scripture says very clearly about the end times is increase in knowledge. Yesterday, I shared with you how knowledge of man have increased over the years, especially from the year 1900s. And then up till the 1970, when there's a drastic change, I mean, increase in humanity's uh, understanding of things. And from that time till now, I was sharing with you about all the technological advancements, all the inventions, and all the mind-blowing things that man has been able to do, especially in the last 30, 40 years. It has been unbelievable. And I want to emphasize Categorically today, category today on this issue of advancement in mobile wireless standards, that is MWS. And I want to talk about the 1G, the 2G, the 3G, the 4G, and now the 5G. The mobile wireless standard is, in a simple way, is the transmission of Transmission over the air from a base station to a moving cell phone or, or a system or a tablet or a laptop. And this has been one of the greatest increase in knowledge of humanity in the last few years. And it is creating a lot of controversies today. I want to talk about it extensively. The mobile wireless system, as I told you, it involves transmitting over the air from a base station to uh, a, a laptop or a tablet or a cell phone. And it involves, it involves voice, it involves data, and it also involves SMS. Let me start from the beginning. Let me start from the 0G. I know you all know about 3G, 4G, 5G. But let me tell you about 0G. The word G actually means generation. So you can understand that they are talking about the generation of mobile wireless. Now we are entering the fifth generation of mobile wireless as I'm talking to you. 0G is actually talking about the season before mobile wireless started at all. That is the pre-cellular generation. The generation before cellular became uh, known. And many of you that may be hearing me or watching me may be part of that generation. It's only those who are in their 20s now that are part of the cellular generation. But those of us who are elderly will are fully aware of the pre-cellular generation. That is the generation before the cellular phone, the generation before the wireless network, laptop, the generation before the internet as we have it today. And that is the generation before 1973. Those generations were not aware at all of what were. You see, today these things have become so common, but there was nothing like that, nothing, practically nothing like that until the 70s. From that generation, we now have the 1G. That is the beginning of the wireless and mobile telephone. The first generation of wireless and mobile telephone, we call them the 1G. 
It was launched by the company called Nippon uh, Telegram and Telephone, that is NTT, Nippon Telegram and Telephone in Japan, in Tokyo, Japan. It was launched in the year 1979. Earlier on, in the year 1973, the first mobile phone was actually made. 1G is clearly analog in standard. It was purely an analog uh, mobile network. And it, it, despite the fact that it was analog, it still ruled the world between the year 1979 until the mid-80s. It was the in thing. Even though it was not very popular in the third world, it was very known in the first world and in the advanced countries. The third world nations were still backward. They were not even aware of some of those things at all. It, it started in Asia from Tokyo, I told you, and then it became moved to the United States of America, who accepted it years later, then Canada, then the UK, and then the whole of the world started to take the 1G. But the 1G had its own drawbacks. Number one, the 1G had a very poor coverage. The 1G has low sound quality. The 1G has no, there's no rooming support for between two operators. If, if an operator is operating, as we have many operators today, there is no support for you to roam from one operator to the other. There is no compatibility also between systems. And it was, the worst of it was, it was not, it was not encrypted. Encrypted in the sense that if anybody has a radio scanner, he can drop in on a call that anybody is making. That is, that makes it very, very terrible. And that was the undoing of the of the 1G. From the 1G generation, then we move on to the 2G generation. The 2G was launched under the GSM standard and it was launched in Finland in the year 1991. Can you see the progression? And it is digital. 1G was purely analog, but 2G was digital. And the advantage of 2G above 1G it's also because calls on 1G, 2G were encrypted. So nobody can just hold a nobody can just hold a radio and then they can just you can jam your call. It, it was not possible again with 2G. Calls became unscripted, the calls became clearer, and then the SMS was introduced. Short message system. It was then that the SMS came in, and we can now text people what we want to say in a short form and they can get it. And before the end of that, they also brought in the MMS. MMS is like a, the picture message. You can now send a message not only by text, but also by picture. The 2G was superior to the 1G also in terms of speed. The 2G was very, very high. The, the 1G speed was about 9.6 uh, kilobytes per second in terms of the language of mobile network. It was 9.6 kilobytes per second. But the 2G rose to become 500 kilobytes per second. That was a huge, that was a huge movement. And so mobile network became more acceptable. Uh, people started to use it more. But technology can never stop. And then we move on to 3G. 3G was launched in the year 2000. And one. Did you see the decades of the movement? <laughs> you need to understand what is happening. 3G was launched in the year 2001. And for 3G, you can access your data from any location in the world. Unlike 2G, where you can't access from any location in the world, you are limited from one location to the other. But with 3G, you can now access from anywhere in the world. International roaming services became a reality. You can be anywhere in the world, and because of 3G, roaming services became so beautiful. You know the beauty about 3G? 3G was four times faster than 2G. Yeah. 3G was four times faster than 2G. And then we can do video conferencing, which was never so before. We can do video live streaming, and then Skype came in. These were the advancements that were made with these uh, mobile wireless standards over the years as knowledge of man increases. By the year 2002, BlackBerry was introduced. It was launched. And by the year 2007, iPhone was also launched. Till As I'm talking to us, many of us are still on 3G. If you look at your phone, you look at the bar, the battery area, or where your SIM card network area 
uh, of your provider used to show, it will always write three. Yes, you see three G there. That's what he's talking about, and that is, it is a very common one that uh, is now available in our world today. But from three G, the world jumped to four G in the year two thousand and nine. 4G was actually launched 2009, just a few years ago. It was just 2009, which is just about two years from now, from here. Did you see that the rate of the change as now the, the, the gap is de decreasing? It took very many long years, centuries before man come to this level. But the moment we got to this level and knowledge was increasing, the, the rate of changing from one level to the other, the years were reducing. 2009 was the beginning of 4G. Now, just two years later, we have started talking about 5G. First G, 4G was first deployed in Stockholm, Sweden, and also in Oslo, in Norway, in the year 2009. 4G has high-quality videos and streaming. It's possible that some of you are using 4G to listen to me or to watch me on any of the social medias as I'm talking now. The 4G became a very fast one. And you have fast mobile web access because of the 4G. Because of 4G, gaming services also became available. And you will notice that games have become so common, especially among young people. A lot of young people have become so addicted to games. And you now have demonic games even that are targeting children. Some years ago, we heard of a game that a lot of children were committing suicide because of these evil games. With 4G, the HD video was super. Video conferencing became possible, and this is what many people are now using all over the world. But I want you to understand this about humanity and technology. Number one, human, will, human wants are insatiable. Human beings can never be satisfied. We will keep going for more and more and more and more. And that's why we are not satisfied with 4G. We are going to 5G. Number two, the need of man is not only increasing, the responsibilities and the burdens we place ourselves is increasing. Technology has become the, the center of man. So we need to keep improving that technology year in, year out. The world is now so, so dependent on technology and the world is driving towards technology will be the, the thing driving everything. So we need to keep improving the ability of those technology to withstand the time. And so 4G cannot even solve the problem the way we are going. Because everything is driven by technology. Now those of you that live in the third world country may not fully understand this. But those who live in the first world countries know that their life is totally enwrapped in technology. You kill technology today, those nations are dead. Number three, understand this, that one invention we always need to another. God has given man so much grace of wisdom that when there's an invention, somebody is thinking of how to improve on that invention. And that invention is not just going to be improved upon. There will be other inventions related to that inventions that will come out. And number four, notice that man will not stop until he gets to the end. That's the way God fashioned man. And that's this zeal and drive with humanity. We don't want to stop. And the devil is using that. The devil is driving man. That if we are not careful, man will get to self-destruct. But humanity does not stop until they are stopped. If you remember the Tower of Babel, man was not ready to stop in Tower of Babel. Genesis chapter 11, they kept building and building. And God said, if I don't stop man, it looks strange. You know when you read that story and God is saying, if I don't stop man, they will build a tower that will reach to heaven. You may want to say it's not possible. But God is teaching you a principle there. That number one, man will not stop. And number two, it takes God to stop man. Man will not stop. Technology will not stop. Man will keep advancing. We keep developing. We keep getting deeper. We want to know more. Man wants to be like God. And when man gets to an edge, when God feels they have crossed the border, then God in his infinite wisdom is the only one that can stop man. And so we are talking about 5G today. 5G has come into our world. It was launched in China in 2019. Yes, last year. It was launched in China. The dream of 5G is this. Listen. 
The dream of 5G is to make mobile, mobile not just a phone, but the IoT. Mobile is not just going to be... I, IoT means Internet of Things. That's the language, Internet of Things. And Internet of Things means you can, you can accomplish anything. You can do everything. Internet becomes the God. Internet becomes the center. Internet becomes all. That is IoT. And that is the dream of 5G. That you can do anything from navigation to photography to communication to telemedicine. 5G, hear this. 5G, wow. 5G is 10 times improvement on 4G. 5G will bring 10 times improvement of phone ability and performance. 5G phones will be 10 times in performance and ability than 4G phones. Now, this is where the danger is. There are two schools of thought about this 5G issue. And I'm sure you have had a lot of issues going on. I want to put a lot of things very straight so that you can get it right. Number one, the first school of thought are saying that it is very dangerous and this may cause a lot of damage and they are correct. Uh, 5G will cause a lot of, will cause DNA damage. 5G will cause cancer. 5G will cause premature aging. 5G will, will also lead to many other diseases. But there's another school of thought that are saying it's not that bad. We don't need to be scared. We don't need to, we don't need to carry all these uh, theories and uh, conspiracy theories and you know make the world to be afraid. They are saying it's not more dangerous than the normal Gs we have been using. Number two, they are saying that if you have adopted to the first G and two G and three G and four G, then who says we are not going to adopt to five G? And they are also correct. That is the truth. And then they are saying that, well, it is non-iodizing electronic radiation. So, and because it's not iodizing and electronic radiation, it's everywhere. So what's the big deal? Uh, we have power line. Power line is there. Those of you that live beside power line, you know the way power line is. And human beings are still living there. Their school of thought is that the FM radio is also there. The FM radio also, you know, generates some radiation, which is not non non uh, ionizing. Uh, to them, the Wi-Fi is there. We use Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi also projects some radiations, and then the sun also is there. But some scientists have brought out the fact that that is not a good point. That the radiation brought out by all these things are never is nothing compared to what is being brought out by 5G, and that 5G is highly 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 dangerous this second school of thought are also saying those who are saying there's nothing wrong with it number four they are saying well the advantages are more than the disadvantages so why should people talk about it the, the things we are going to gain from it the 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 the, 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 the advantages the advancement that is going to come from 5g the same way you can look back and know that 2g is better than 1g and 3g is better than 2g and 1g and 4g is better than 3g and 2g and 1g and definitely 5g will be better than 4g and 3g which many of us are still using it will make communication easier advancement possible many things more easier all over the world this is where the world is today. There's a confusion between those who are projecting the 5G and those who are fighting against it. But before I tell you my view from scriptures on which I will round up this broadcast, let me say this to you. That while people are still arguing about 5G, China has officially launched research and development into 6G. Yes, did you hear me right? Why you are all shouting and people are making noise about 5G. China have gone ahead. It has been launched for the research and development. And I'm, I, am, I am telling you, we are talking of 2019. By 2026 G, I mean, we are talking of 2020 now. By 2021, 6 G will come out. I'm telling you the truth. And, and that's, what, that's why I'm going to share this with you. Listen to this, my summary in few points. Number one. 5G has come to stay. Nations will fight it. 
Some will not accept it. Some will reject it. Uh, civil rights organization will rise up. Medical spy will rise up. Many things will happen. Yes, I agree with you. There will be a lot of fight. But let me tell you, the powers that be wants 5G to stay. So 5G will stay. Number two, yes, there will be casualties. A lot of people will die. Many things are going to happen. The effect of 5G will affect a lot of people. Uh, but there is nothing you can do about that because this there's always an effect of every technology and every advancement will always be a negative effect. It will happen. Number three, 6G will follow 5G. I'm telling you the truth. It will come. The 6G will come. By the time the hype of 5G goes down and everybody stops talking and people have accepted it and we start using it, then they will bring in 6G. I, I don't know. I don't know whether they will bring in 10G in the future. Uh, and I, I hope I'm not going to be here by then. But they are going to keep bringing in more and more G. And who knows when we get to 10G, they will not take it to... What's the alphabet after G? A, B, C, D, F, G. Maybe there will not be one H. <laughs> and then two, two H and three H. And, and then, you see, humanity is... Is thirsty. The knowledge of man will keep increasing. We are in for a rough, bumpy ride. Get ready for more and more of these. Number four, my summary. Knowledge will increase. That's what the Bible says. So, you shouldn't be surprised. Man is not going to stop with 5G. Because as they are seeing 5G, some scientists are already discovering 6G. As we are using 6G, they see the problem and the, the, the limitation of 6G. They are thinking of 7G because no, no understand this, that the best of man's knowledge is still very, very in, in, in infinitesimal to compare to divine understanding. The, all these things we are talking about, technology is so small. It's so small when you look at it in the realm of divine wisdom. And so man is thirsty. They want to go higher. I want to get to a level and point where, you know, they are like gods. The, the, the humanity become a god on its own. So, what am I saying? Knowledge will increase. That's what the Bible says. And so get ready for more and more of it. And then number five, these, two, these are the tools that the Antichrist will use. This is the reason why these things will not stop. The Antichrist will use it. The Antichrist will use these things to control the world. You see, technology is a very important thing for the Antichrist. I'm going to share with you about the Antichrist in the previous, in subsequent broadcast. But that is what the Antichrist will use. The Antichrist needs technology to rule the world. Because without the 6G and 5G, there is, the, the microchips cannot work. The chip implant on people's hand, on people's head cannot work. So those things are very important. They are, there's a way to control the world. And there's a force that wants to control this world. So I'm telling you, 5G will stay and 6G will come. And I want to say this lastly, more pandemics are ahead. Number six, more pandemics are ahead. It is an historic fact, beloved, that in the last 150 years, every pandemic is always preceded or followed by a leap in go black technology. Something always happened. It happened in 1917. It happened in 1940. It happened in the 60s. It is happening in the It happened in the 90s. It is happening in the. It happened in the 2000. It is happening in the 2020. And so, what am I saying? Therefore, there is only one hope in Christ. Stay in Christ. Come into Jesus. Know him as your Lord and Savior. Live your life. You have to believe in divine healing. Because these things will happen. You have to walk in divine healing. You have to live in divine healing. You have to live the Bible now. Enough of playing Christianity. You need to live a practical. You need to bring out the Bible and live it. Your children, your family must stay under the blood. And walk by the standard of the word of God. Because the Bible says darkness will cover the earth. And God's darkness the people. You see, it now takes those who understand spiritual things to come out and stay on top of the situation. I pray for you. No matter what is happening, wherever our world is going, you will not be swallowed by it. Wherever this generation is going, it seems like self-destruct. But the Lord God of heaven will keep you. He will bless you and your family and uphold you from now and forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
and amen. Thank you for tuning in today. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, Sister Fola Shade, uh, thank you for watching today. God bless you. Statosi Ayani Kebelo from the UAE. I love you, daughter. Thank you for watching. Ambassador Wellington uh, Sate from Liberia. The Lord bless you, son. Thank you for watching. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you and all of you that joined me today. Please share this broadcast. Make sure let everybody hear about it. Right? Let's get this to the ears of everybody to prepare for what is ahead of us. It is well with you. My name is Samuel Wad, and this broadcast continues every day, understanding the times. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Make sure you don't allow COVID-19 to affect you. Be safe in Jesus' name. Amen.